Hi. Uh, Hello. We we finally got there. Yeah, I got there in the end. Yeah. <laughs> how, how are you? Um. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um. Yeah. I'm just a bit disappointed I didn't make it to the um the exhibition. On yeah. The so um. Yeah. Hopefully, you're going to be able to come over over the next couple of weeks. Um. But yeah, I'm coming over from Leeds. Okay. Um. Yeah. So the journey is not not too bad. It's not too bad, but um, I'll just try and do it um yeah. during the day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it was a, it was a it was a good yeah. opening. Um, we had quite a few people down, so it was quite a good turnout. Yeah. 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 Should I start by? So my name's because you haven't actually met us. My name's yeah. <laughs> uh, and then yeah, Jake can introduce himself. Yeah. Um. So uh, my name is Jay Ottawa. So um, basically, uh, year out, fine art graduate, Manchester School of Art. Uh, me and Jason have known each other since uni, and we've collaborated on various projects together. So uh, we're very excited to do one about drawing because yeah, it's kind of my area of interest, kind of thing. So yeah, so I'll just do I'll do a little um, introduction, and then if you're happy, we'll just sort of get going with the questions. Yeah. Um, yeah so today we're interviewing Lucy Crouch. Um, she's one of the artists who currently has work in Drawing Beyond Itself, uh, the exhibition at Air Gallery. Uh, Lucy Crouch is an artist whose work explores the concept of drawing, focusing in particular on the role of materiality. Her work operates at the intersection between drawing and new materialism. Um, often sculptural in form, her work engages directly with the architecture of the space in which it is situated. Um, so yeah, Jay's going to kick off, I think, with the first question. First question indeed, uh, okie doke. Uh, again, thank you for your time, Lucy, for this. Um, so I wanted to ask you to start with, um, you state that the concept of drawing is subject of my work. Can you expand a little bit on this? What do you mean by this? Like, ha like is it, what's the, what's the specific role of your work in terms of like drawing? Um, so thinking about saying that the, the concept of drawing act as, as the subject um, I think I've, for me um, I've got an understanding of drawing which is more of a sort of active process and approach um, and a, as more of a sort of doing word um, rather than as a medium that's confined by specific tools or materials um, so I've been interested in exploring how we perceive um, drawing and the qualities that are associated with it and I think I, I got to the point where I was making work that was driven by the concept of drawing and how it operates but the work I was making was maybe more sculptural or material based um, so that seemed like a, a way of um, sort of describing how I was making work and where that was coming from. Sure yeah and then um, sort of talking about the mentioned the materiality you reference new materialism um as an important aspect what's your you know sort of in your own words what's your understanding of new materialism and and how does it feature in your work when you um for me um i would understand new, new materialist theory um as it's i don't think that kind of binary separation between human and non-human and a, a lot of theory around what that entails um, and it would consider material as something that's active or generative or um, that could be part of that, do, that doing process of drawing itself um, and could take part in what the drawing is doing together with the artist potentially. Um, so we're kind of applying that to my practice. Um, there's the idea that the the materials that you're using could be active with that as well as the artist's eye or the kind of the gesturing of the artist. So it, bringing that in and I think that it when I discovered new materialism it made me think about exploring how materials could um, act out those processes of drawing um, and 
the processes that you might associate with drawing as kind of describing a line in some way of making a trace of something, outlining an area um, or having that kind of thin paper-like quality. So all those kind of mm. qualities that you think of a draw drawing to have that, that a material um, could do. And I think once I started to think about that, that kind of really widened my approach to what I was making. Yeah, and when you talk about um, some of those kind of characteristics of drawing, is that you mentioned this kind of language of drawing? So is that where yeah. where the materiality meets the, the kind of language of drawing through those those ways? Yeah, um, I think the the materials that I was using um, became as important as. The drawings that I was making so um, that I think I was at a time making um, spending a lot of time transforming materials and thinking about the, the surfaces of the material that I might have been drawing on um, and then I because I was thinking about the language that we use when we talk about drawing and, and I was reading about um, about drawing a lot and, and hearing people describe drawing and thinking about those kind of describing words and thinking that the sort of material transformation that I was doing and um, making in the studio, I could think about those as drawing. Mm -hmm. that's, that's, that's quite an interesting take on drawing. I mean, I've, I've seen your work uh, at the yeah. Drawing Beyond Itself uh, show in the opening as well. Um, it, it's quite interesting because I, I wanted to ask you as well, it, it, they seem quite sculptural and yeah. there's a sculptural element to, to, to your work and drawing, we, we, we see drawing as a very two-dimensional sort of flat um, sort of uh, surface. I, I was wondering how does you were talking about like new materialism materiality in your work and sort of like doing word for the for the for the work and the the, the sort of active and the generative process of it where does the sculptural influence come into it or does that just happen naturally or um, i think i've always been quite interested in practices where um drawing and sculpture overlap and mm -hmm. um I mean, often you can see sculptural practices where you can see elements of drawing within that mm -hmm. as well, mm -hmm. and it, it works both ways. Um, and I think previously, when I've been making work on paper, I think it naturally occurred that I would be very careful about how I was presenting that work. Um, mm -hmm. And as I was installing the work, the the pa I was seeing the paper as a sculptural material, so it it naturally kind of happened that it it wasn't just a purely two D piece of work, and um, so I think that was quite fluid, um, and as I was looking at new materialism, and um, I then again thought about using the materials like graphite, which I've used mm -hmm. a lot, and other materials associated with drawing, and how those kind of sculptural elements of those could be drawn out. Um, yeah, I was going to ask, like, um, purely in terms of so graphite, obviously features a lot, but yeah. you, you use it in very well to a lot of experimental ways, yeah. sort of liquid graphite and things like that. What have you? Um, it's an interesting material that you know even in Manchester there's little graphene and these things that are used in industry so it's obviously really versatile what have you kind of what have you discovered through these um, you know rather than just using sort of pencils or graphite sticks what have you discovered through this process of really exploring the materiality of it? Um, I think firstly I kind of there's, there's only so many different forms of, of graphite that you can kind of play play with. And I think I'm just really at the beginning of something. 
um, I finished my MA last year and it was during the final year of that that I was starting to play with um, graphite in more of a sculptural way um, and just using um, graphite powder or yeah, particularly the, um, the use of graphite shavings as well, um, which I gathered from previous drawings. Um, and I think for me, that was a really interesting thing to do because it meant that there were these kind of layers of time that were held within that material. Um, so the, the gathering of the, the graphite one from one drawing um, and keeping that and then using that to make um, these sculptural works meant that the, the, the final piece was showing the time that was held from both the, the graphite itself and then the, the kind of history of the graphite being in multiple mm. pieces of, of work. Um, and then that kind of process of, um, process of making those different pieces. Um, but in the, using graphite as well, it had so many different qualities. Um, so there's the liquid graphite that I used in a slice of light, which is um, so silvery and has that, it could become so thin um, that you can see through the material. So the light actually passes mm. through, um, through it. Um, and then there's the kind of complete opposite that of that like dense blackness, um, which I really enjoy. And that mm -hmm. you can kind of create these really like solid objects and I'm working on making something which is much denser and um, a, a kind of a much larger kind of intense piece of the, um, the graphite shavings. So were these all quite, um, these experiments that you, undertook they were they kind of surprises to you did you not always know how the material was going to act and you were just discovering these things as you as you go along basically yeah a lot of them were real surprises and a lot of the pieces that I was making were just the result of, of playing with those materials that I hadn't really worked with much before and um, and when I first started out with them I didn't know where I was going. I was just making lots of small pieces in the studio and um, seeing what I could do with it um, and see, seeing what the qualities of each material kind of lent themselves to. Um, and then I started making pieces that were a little bit more um, determined and uh, had more purpose to them, but they were all kind of things that um, just came from playing with that material. That's quite interesting. I was I was going to ask you as well about the the relationship you have with your work in a three dimensional sense. Because um, when we when we installed your work, it had to be a certain height, if I can remember correctly. Yeah. And I think what was really interesting was this really sort of thin sort of. You know, was it graphite and wallpaper paste? Was it? Like, yeah, yeah. And it was so fragile. And I remember thinking, the space around this work is going to be crucial for this. Um, and I was going to say, like within your work, how do you navigate architectural spaces as a site specific? Does the work exist on its own, or does it need a certain space for it to do what it needs to do? If that makes sense. I'm sorry, could you just repeat the end of that last question? Yeah, no, yeah, I think you froze a little bit, don't worry about it. Um, yeah, how, how, do you, yeah. Um, how do you use the architectural space to sort of like um, show your work? Does it, does it need to be a specific space or can it exist on its own? Um, I think it really depends on the piece of work. Um, a lot of them have a DC is existing by themselves, but they do depend so much on the architectural space in which they're in like the piece mm -hmm. that is installed in the exhibition at the moment it's quite a small work and quite delicate mm -hmm. but because of the way it um 
it comes out the wall horizontally and it it, it does sort of demand space around it um, and I think though I think the, the height in which it was hung I was really thinking about how when you stand back and see it from a distance Um, was this kind of hot line across the wall um, but it can go from sort of 2D to 3D depending on where you're standing mm -hmm. um, but I think I've been when I when I made some of the pieces for previous exhibitions I really made them for um, that specific space um, and I think if they were to be shown again elsewhere, they would perhaps need to be remade for um, the other space it was shown in, mm -hmm. um, or kind of really rethought out. Um, because I think once the drawing becomes three dimensional, it, it, it can't help but have that relationship to the architectural space it's in. And it kind of implicates everything that's around it so um, so it can't exist by itself in the same way as a two-dimensional work can. Yeah, it was really interesting that um, obviously you created a, a subtle support for the, for the work, but that was because of the position of it. Yeah. That was actually hidden, so it did have the, that really nice illusion of it, it just kind of jutting into the wall and almost floating, you know, so... Yeah. Um, that seemed like something you'd maybe thought of with the, the placing of it. Um, and in that sense, I was going to ask you about scale because uh, it's a work that's quite subtle in its scale, but it does really, um, it draws you in, I guess, maybe. That's how we feel. we've got a few mm -hmm. scale works and we found that they actually kind of demand quite a lot of space or they have a power, you know, maybe a quiet power yeah. or something to them. It's not like they get lost. They actually can hold their own, but they, they do something a bit different from larger more more immediate works because we have a few quite large scale works in yeah. The show. just yeah wondering your take on scale and um how you think about that with with your pieces yeah i i think with the with that this piece and um some of the other pieces similar to think there's something about the sketch It's quite intimate and also it perhaps relates to um, <coughs> the small scale of, of drawings that you might expect of um, a more traditional drawing of something that you need to come up close to and spend some time looking at it kind of draws you in in a way that um, another sort of delicate pencil drawing might do. Um, so it kind of relates to where it's come from as a, a you know a graphite pencil drawing, um, but I think I am quite interested in making things that are small and quite um, uh, sort of succinct, but they require that attention. And I think there's something about graphite in that like density of it. It seems that it's kind of holding quite a lot within that small space. Um, yeah, but it does that, do, something that's small but demands um, more space than it um, takes up. <laughs> uh, yeah, do, you, do you want me to do the next question? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Um, sorry, I thought you were going to say something. Um, <laughs> I'm just a little bit curious, Lucy, about your influences on your work. I mean, what artists or practitioners or you know what things do you read what kind of things um sort of draw your attention uh from artists that influence your work do you think um so particularly in relation to time and drawing and um, there are a couple of people as um roger ackling um mm. has been an influence with that and um so he gave me a few um, tutorials while I was at, at Chelsea um, and again with, with Ackling's work um, there's the kind of repetitious nature of that kind of process of 
has been making the black um, dots on driftwood using sunlight, um, but that each of those dots contains a link, a direct link to that particular time in which he made the work. Um, and that, that it's such a simple process, but it requires a particular time when the sun is shining and it kind of mm -hmm. each work holds the kind of the weather and the time of that day when it was made. Um, and that I, those small pieces are, that each contain directly a particular moment of time. Um, and there's also um, Via Kalmins, um, who again in relation to time, um, made a series of uh, drawings based on photographic images of the sea or the, um, or the sky. Um, and so she's making these drawings based on a specific instant of photographic time. Um, but she takes years and years to make each drawing or print. And so there's again these kind of layers of time of the instant and then the long time of making, um, mm. which I'm really interested in. Um, and also um, Ronnie Horn, um, who, again, in relation to thinking about drawing, she, her work is so varied and um, encompasses so many different um, mediums, but she describes drawing as being the thing that connects um, all of her practice. Um, mm -hmm. As drawing is for her being this kind of intuitive way of working. Um, and she does make some, some drawings, um, but it's, it's I think that way of thinking about it as a, a way of thinking and an intuitive way of thinking of bringing together all of these different layers of your practice that might all come from this um, initial drawing practice and that kind of this thinking that that might stay in your head for the rest of the making process and mm -hmm. it everything together. That's really interesting about sort of touching on um, time there because um, you, I think you hinted at it earlier as well, but the idea of uh, graphite as a kind of form of carbon and that um, mm -hmm. sort of geological time and compression of materiality is that is did some of these things kind of um, converge naturally, or is is there a, is there a reason why um, drawing and and carbon and graphite has is that is there a reason you chose that because of this kind of connection to time, or is it something where these all these things connect naturally in a sense um i think they just naturally connected and it was because drawing is so because sorry graphite is that kind of immediate kind of obvious drawing material um, mm. if I, um to to use first but obviously it's it's got that huge connection to um long time and going and it's a very natural material so I that gave me another kind of link um to um to reference time but again it was just a, a natural yeah. a natural link that was made oh sure, yeah um I guess just kind of what are your uh, thoughts about drawing and contemporary art at the moment do you have a kind of quite a big question potentially but do you um we felt like it was exciting to do a show about drawing because it's such a diverse medium and something that feels um not too weighed down perhaps by art history and quite fresh and quite um a real space where people can be experimental with it and, and there's quite a lot of room to sort of grow with it um just wondering what your your take on drawing is in contemporary art um no, I'd, I'd agree. It's like it is a. It does feel like a really exciting time to be um, making expanded drawing and um, kind of 
um, taking part in that debate, debate and um, making new work um, at this time. And obviously with the exhibition that you've made and lots of other um, exhibitions taking place that are now like, focusing on drawing as a practice um, and different expanded drawing practices. It, I think even though I've sort of naturally um, been uh, naturally been uh, found it appealing to work with drawing for quite a long time and it's kind of been something that's stayed throughout my practice um, I think it, it has felt like it's got this certain freedom that as it's relatively recently that it's been seen as a medium in its own right and there's still this mm. kind of hashing out of what you can do with drawing and there's no um there's lots of new writing coming out around mm -hmm. drawing and there's lots of new things happening so it feels like something that you can do something new within this genre and that's mm. quite a nice kind of exciting thing to be part of so um yeah it has happened naturally that i've um worked with drawing but it's it feels like a kind of exciting moment to be um, working in at the moment I, I completely agree and that's one of the reasons why i wanted to put on this kind of drawing beyond itself kind of show I wanted to see all of these artists that were exploring drawing in these different ways in one space and to see all of the work in there is quite it's quite uh, it's quite interesting because it's not always immediately obvious you know, uh, sometimes a drawing might be, uh, might, might do performance or film and to really like narrow it down a little bit and to really sort of like reappraise drawing a little bit in a, in a sense that we can see it not, not just, you know, like scribbles on a piece of paper or like very, you know, two dimensional. Um, there are other, other mediums that cross over it. I don't know if you kind of agree with that or want to say a bit about that I mean do you feel like because you deal with like new materials and in your work as well so that crossover is quite interesting I was wondering how you felt about that yeah I'm I'm, just, I'm excited to go and see the exhibition as soon as I can and like mm -hmm. and I'm I, I'm in, in really interested to see um how the other artists um think about their work and think about drawing and mm -hmm. I'm interested to see how people who might be in like digital practices or video or performances, you said, um, relate to drawing and how all of our practices as you see them in one space might kind of intersect and the things that you um, might see kind of crossing over between some really um, different practices. Um, so that, I think that's what what I'm kind of looking forward to seeing um, in the show. I guess um, in, in that kind of vein, is there, if you were to move to work with a kind of another medium, but still linking it with the, con the kind of concept of drawing, is there something that appeals to you that, that something you see as maybe a possible future project in a, with another medium? Um. I think I'm I'm looking to continue like m making objects and things that are um, sculptural um, using using these materials that I started to be interested in. But I think that could then lead on to making moving image to see um, yeah moving image or performance um, of these different materials. Um, I think that's something that could be interesting to to see as I was talking about drawing as being this active process of things, um, materials doing something. So I think that would kind of naturally lead in on to um, seeing things that might move in time. So there's that, there's that kind of scope where 
you, you'd like it to naturally emerge and, and evolve, but there's room for that to kind of different media to be brought into the to the territory of drawing, I guess. Yeah. Um, I was, yeah, I mean, are there, you talked about some of your kind of artistic influences, are there any, you know, um, any books about drawing or things that you've found, or perhaps, you know, other, other bits of literature that you found um, particularly helpful or, or an influence on your practice? Yeah. Um, there's a, there's a book um, called Writing on Drawing. Um, it's edited by Steve Garner and that's got some really good essays within that book. And there's another um, book called On the Line, which I can't remember who, who wrote that, but it um, comes at just the, the line um, from a lot of different perspectives um, and that's been really really useful and influential um, so those two things um. yeah yeah that's great for people watching this if I do really have, have a few few points <laughs> Yeah, we're um, we're kind of heading towards the end of our um, yeah. allotted time. But you know, is there anything that you'd like to ask me or Jay? Or yeah, um, I'd I'd be interested to know a bit about both of your practices and how you relate to to drawing yourselves. Yeah, Jay, do you want to? Yeah, um, try and keep it short because I think we've only got we'll split it in half, Jason. I'll take four minutes. You take four. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so I, I think for, for me, um, so a year out of art school, kind of, I was really specifically drawn to the idea of drawing as sort of like a research basis, kind of like drawing research. So I was really interested in loads of stuff to do with drawing. And I felt like it wasn't sort of, sort of focused enough in the art school. And obviously when you, you're doing your BA, you're kind of, you're a bit like, oh, I've got all this freedom and I don't know what to do with it. And painting wasn't working, sculpture wasn't working, and drawing seemed to be the thing I was doing the most, um, even if it was simplest writing in my journal. So that I've used as kind of leverage of when I finished. And I think just having conversations with other people about drawing is how this show came about. Um, I kind of see my work as kind of like, so far kind of like looking at the act of drawing as opposed to the final outcome so i kind of like activate drawing and its materials through these different actions and they kind of reverberate these like sort of subconscious modes of scribbling and doodling or you know crumpling or pulling and poking um i haven't been in the studio because of you know been really focusing with with this with jason and alan and bex um and i'm hope i'm just ready to go back in and start start again and sort of unpick drawing uh, in my own practice. So that's kind of the things I'm interested in, I'm sort of dealing with is, you know, like the sort of materiality of drawing, the act of drawing, and it's kind of like it's process. I, I use that word quite loosely. It's sort of, uh, use the word process is kind of like, sort of like the, the exposure of drawing, as you will, as opposed to the sort of grand, like this is an amazing drawing, I'd rather, It'd be spread out yeah. and say, well, this is A to B and this is this is how it happened, kind of thing. So that's that's kind of a bit about me really. So yeah. Pass you on to Jason now. <laughs> um yeah, so so my my practice is is prob is is more centered around expanded painting actually. Um so that's 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 the kind of anchor in, in most yeah. of my work. But I think I see lots of parallels in that kind of territory of of exploring the, the kind of expanded field so I think that's that's where I've kind of come into play I think with this exhibition is, is really thinking about um, I'm really interested when one medium is slightly contaminated by the uh, another almost and, and there's something that occurs in that um, apart from that a lot of the the work that I've made has also been looking at translate translating sort of architectural plans yeah. so looking at quite looking at forms of sort of drawing and 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 design and then um line i guess really and how to how to then uh kind of create creatively interpret that so yeah it's um and then you know then generally drawing is a kind of 
I think most artists use it in as a sort of thought process or having working drawings running um, is always helpful. But yeah, it's that for me, it's the, um, the overlap of mediums I, f I find quite fascinating. Um, and obviously that, that suddenly, uh, I guess that it, when that happens historically, that also opens up other possibilities that you've, you know, you've obviously, you touched on, on your work that's, um, you, you might, you know, you, you push a, a material and then it suddenly enters another, um, whether it's sculpture or, you know, um, architecture. A lot of my work, again, I like what you said about as soon as you start making something slightly sculptural. So I, I work a lot with um, things that are, end up as kind of reliefs on the wall. They're, they're flat, but they've got a bit of, you know, a bit more uh, sculptural form to them. And immediately that, that brings in architecture into the fray. So I quite, I like what you mentioned about that, um, that process. But yeah, it's the, it's the expanded territory as a, as a whole that I would say that I'm quite fascinated by. Um, mm -hmm. And it's been really interesting to, we, I think we, see how much time we've got. We, early on, one of the discussions was how do we, and this is still maybe up for debate, but what, what do you sort of let into the, what, what do you classify as drawing mm -hmm. or where do you put, where do you set the, yeah. uh, the, the boundaries? Because we were concerned early on, you know, you don't want to say it can just be anything. Yeah. But then, mm -hmm. you know, it's almost case by case. We, we, I think we said if we felt like the artists were, you know, having an engagement with drawing and that there was something really there that was fascinating, it could be done in almost any, any medium and any approach. Um, so we hope the show kind of, yeah, sh like showcases the, the range of approaches that are possible while still feeling like a show about drawing. Um, that was the challenge a bit. So mm. I guess you can maybe see if we've uh, achieved that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> When you see the show, but I, I was going to say, Jason. I was. Uh, I think didn't we discuss this uh, when I said to you, "Was it? Was it?" I think I said. I think I called it an investigation of drawing. I think it was. That was kind of the idea. It wasn't necessarily saying this is drawing. It's more to say what is drawing. What can it do? What, how do you unpick it? Um, sort of like really sort of get to the root of contemporary drawings I think you know has a long and huge history it's just fascinating to see what artists are doing with it today I don't know. It's just... yeah asking questions I guess rather than saying you know this mm. is what it is um yeah. so an open dialogue is something that we hope is kind of uh, you know obviously doing these artist talks plays into that idea of yeah. gushing I guess and um you know making your own mind up about its possibilities. I guess kind of seeing all of these, um, seeing where drawing is at kind of the edge of that medium tells you something about where it is today and kind of those kind of asking questions of what that edge is and um, seeing those kind of slippages between um, drawing and bringing other things in. Um, Kind of yeah helps ask ask those questions yeah definitely i think um it, it it feels like one thing i feel more certain about that maybe drawing is the most flexible medium as a whole perhaps um that it has the most room to you know it kind of underpins a lot of other work and most artists use it in some way so it feels like quite all encompassing as much as it can be specific i think jay's giving me the nod because i think we've run out of time but um i i, I just yeah, I just don't want us to cut out. It's really interesting. I've had, I, yeah, yeah. I, I love yeah. doing these conversations. But, do we sort of um, do our farewells and? Yeah. yeah. Thank you very much for today. Yeah. yeah thank, thank you. you. Really nice thank you. Today. Yeah. And ho hopefully you'll get to see the show soon. So. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Brilliant. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.